Hey everybody, Radaman here. Thanks for tuning in to Star Sector. So, last episode, we are picking up where we left off. We were fighting some bounties out here. Uh, there is a, in Hybrasil, there is a current bounty on all pirates. And we, oh, well here we go. I guess we're getting immediately into another pirate fight. Now the only problem going fight into fight into fight into fight with not a lot of cooldown is, um... You, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Is you end up, uh... Yeah, reinforcements, fine, I'll reinforce. I was trying to figure out which ship is which. I think Glitch, okay, I'm gonna feel Glitch on Talon. I've renamed some of the ships. Uh, but yeah, if you go fight to fight to fight, uh, your combat readiness doesn't have time to recover, and that can be a problem. So, uh, let's all escort the Dominator. Dominator, you are going to, um, search and destroy, and I'm gonna ride independently. Uh, maybe I'll go for the mule. They're trying to use anti-shield weapons on me. Wow, you're using your own kite as a uh, cannon fodder? Yeah, I'm taking you out quick. Alright, I'm turning off my shields because my uh, my power is about to overload. Took a little uh, aft damage there, not too, too, too bad. I'm going to vent before continuing to fight. So that's the mule gone, that was their, I think, big ship. Hey, little dude. Now, quite, uh, kites, but despite their size, uh, they are able to have some pretty devastating missiles. So, yeah, they're teeny, but until you, uh, until you're captaining a massive ship, you should still be careful of the kites. All right, they just lost a mud skipper. Uh, the gaze into the void is a little overloaded. Oh, that's gonna hurt them. That was a nasty shot by that, uh, wolf. They're using uh, big dumb fire torpedoes. Those red glowing uh, ordinances do a lot of damage. But now I'm on the attack. I'm gonna vent out so I can start catching up. The uh, mud skip or Cerberus, whatever it is, decides to uh, go toe to toe. That's not gonna be wise. You're not going to catch my shields down for a torpedo hit. And I think all they have left is this shepherd and the kite that's in front of it. As you can see, I didn't even... Uh, sometimes I don't enter the fight with my shields up because that will start uh, wearing out your... Um, flux, so I'll only really turn it on as soon as they start firing on me. Alright, I don't want their wreckage. I will take their stuff. And I have two character points to spend. So one, well let's see, what do I, what do I really want? Damage to shields would be really, really good. Um, I don't particularly like missiles. Peak operating time would be really, really nice. And less malfunctions, but let me consider as well some others. Um, flux capacity, and I'm going to do flux capacity on one and maybe uh, work towards, no, I'm going to reset. I'm going to get uh, stabilized shields here, level two. Damage taking my shields down 20%. And that way I can uh, tank a little bit better. Oh, you know what I didn't do is um, pick through that debris field. Let me turn around real quick. Consider ship recovery. All of them are really, really damaged, so I'm not going to bother. But I did get a little bit more gear from that. And then there's this debris field. Is this from the Lila? No. That is unlikely and high risk, so I won't be doing that. Uh, additionally, let's see. Did you level up? You did. So this is a new skill. Either I can get a zero flux boost, activated 1% flux, or flux capacity. I'm going to go flux capacity. And either I can max out helmsmanship or get gunnery implants. Uh, I'm going to do gunnery implants. Um, 
Power grid mod modulation number two. That sounds good. Or mm, target analysis. Yeah, I'm going to do targeting analysis and then targeting analysis level two. Oh, wow. He leveled up a lot. Target analysis level three. Gonnery level two. Wait, how did he level up this much? Uh, max out Helmsman. Max out Grid. Wow, all right. So he's kind of passed me a little bit. That's all right. Uh, so he'll be able to control that uh, Dominator a lot better. His um, monthly income goes up uh, as a result of all the le leveling, but it's, it's worth it. Another thing to consider is, uh, well, let's take a look. So he is a, um, okay. He's a steady officer. Officers can have different personality types, which control how they, um, they control their ships. So let's see if we can't find someone. Uh, freelance administrator, portmaster. Okay, there's no mercenaries here. I would like to start uh, hiring some additional officers, is what I'm really in the mood to do. So, let's sell some of this excess stuff on the black market. Actually, before we even do that, I'm going to uh, refit my ships. Because we have a... So, so let me just go over the names. The Condor class um, carrier is now Talon. Glitch is the Empty Shrike. And then the other Shrike is Tragic Hysteria, named after my patrons. And then, of course, we have Gaze Into the Void, uh, piloted by Vredog, and Sumo, and then me and my ship. It's funny, I don't even have the largest ship. All right, so this is the new Shrike here. Some point defense and general lasers. Okay, it's not an amazing ship, but it will do. Uh, what did I put? Instead of shields and thrusters? Okay. Thrusters and extended shields. Alright, so 14, 13, 12, 8. Alright, so this has slightly smaller weapons, but, um, uh, you know, it'll function. And then we also have this kite class that I didn't uh, bring out either. So now the a lot of the more common weapons... Oops, that's not what I meant to do. The more common weapons that I got... From combat, I'm going to sell. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Now, I would like to add to my crew for officers to get them to start leveling up. And it makes these ships that they control all the more powerful. So, I'm going to pop around mercenary officer. So, this mercenary officer is... Steady personality, combat endurance, and advanced countermeasures. So advanced countermeasures, um, yeah, let's all, let's hire her. So let's take a look. Uh, we would likely put her into Talon, maybe. So combat endurance is how long they can be deployed without suffering uh, fatigue. And the countermeasures is good against uh, fighters. So, um... Countermeasures is particularly useful for a big, unwieldy ship, but I'm going to put her as captain of the um, of the ta uh, Talon. And we are going to give her a new name. Max Power. Uh, sort of Maxine Power, you can imagine, maybe. But uh, yeah, there you go. Max Power. And she's making a third of what uh, Vredog is making. Now, I might end up dismissing uh, captains and hiring new ones depending on personality traits. Uh, so there's personality traits like Reckless. Reckless sort of attacks with abandon, uh, almost suicidally. You don't necessarily want a lot of Reckless captains. Certain ships are very, very tough to kill. Um, the largest class ships, uh, particularly maybe the Paragon, are very, very hard to kill. And as a result, you might be able to get away with um, Reckless uh, people that are uh, um, that are captaining massive ships, but small ships, they're just going to get destroyed constantly. So there's some um, 
design mods here that I could purchase, but uh, I don't think I'm going to. What I will be doing is heading back towards Dawn and looking for some more pirates to kill. Either that or checking the... I almost wanted to call it the Aether Waves, but checking the um, comms to see if there's uh, uh, other missions to pick up. So, I already stabilized the jump points, so let's get rid of the that. Local... Yeah, it's just uh, three days left on this bounty, so I might as well finish up this bounty. Killing any pirates I see for the next three days. Oops, I meant to actually grab that. And then I think what I'll do is uh, I need to start making some big bucks. And the way to make big bucks, in my opinion, is to search around for surveyable nice worlds and then uh, pirate activity over already. Oh, yep. No longer bounties. Okay. Well, then, if that's the case, we got to find some other contract or something to do. So there's some actual money bounties on... Um, on some pirates or some uh, church members. Um. Now here you can see what kind of um, ships they are captaining. So this Ludic Church, uh, the Ludic Church posted a bounty on a notorious pirate, but I don't really want to work for the church. Um, what about exploration? Nope, 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 nope. Fleet departures, military. There's a bounty. This fleet's a... That'd be a tough fight. I'd probably lose people. Hmm. Well, I think at this point... Let me try to start to survey local systems. And work on figuring out where I can future colonize. So for that, uh, all I really need is a decent amount of crew and heavy machinery. Uh, that I have in spades. I'm gonna move these, uh, move the goods I want to keep away from uh, the stuff I tend to sell. Now, just to put this in perspective, in no way do I even have a respectable fleet. I have basically have the smallest fleet possible that is uh, sort of combat ready. Um, you'll ha in, in this game, there is some. Death stacks of fleets, I'll put it that way. Uh, so you, you do have to be very careful. Alright, so this is a crummy little world. There might be some secrets here. Uh, nope. Nothing on that world. This would have really never been a contender for colonization. I am just sort of interested in surveying. Uh, hoping to find things like additional pristine forges. I want to keep this one uh, for when I have a planet to colonize, but I don't want to... Oh, we don't even have enough people to survey here. I don't want to um, sell it, although it would give me a, a great boost, but um, my, you know, unless I have a purpose for the money, uh, there's really no point. So here's a remnant fleet. A remnants... Um, remnants are... I'm just going to send my second in command to handle it. Uh, so when you so massively outnumber a an enemy, uh, you can just send your second in command to just go do whatever combat it's asking you to do. And I just sent my second in command to do it because I, uh, I really didn't need to. I'm going to keep the uh, graviton beam weapon. So the remnants are sort of an ancient enemy there they attack you I don't I don't want to ruin any of the lore or the story or whatever but they they attack everyone they see and they're very very you know they're they're set up to be uh, kamikaze essentially and I don't think you can ever salvage their ships or at least not I've never managed to do it meaning it's not like um, you can ever be a captain of remnants or anything like that well wow, this system sucks so, one hallmark of this game is that the the galaxy is a little random. So the core of the galaxy is actually pretty static. Uh, the core never really changes, but 
the systems around the core do change, uh, and you have a different type of galaxy every time. Um, so there is one system called uh, Persephone, which should be really, really close by, and that tends to be its setup where it's uninhabited, but it is um, sort of a golden world where it has all the things that you would need for um, uh, for your initial colonies. But that doesn't mean that it's the best one. Uh, sometimes there are better systems that are superior to that system. But that, that world exists just to make sure that um, no matter how crappy your random world generation is, there is at least a place where you are able to colonize and start uh, your own empire. And ideally, when you um, are colonizing, you want a system that has a lot of planets that are, are habitable. I would say the most important is the number of planets. You want at least three planets that you could theoretically inhabit. Because that will help out a lot. Oh, I leveled up. Um, let's see. I don't need that one yet. I'm going to do target analysis. Target analysis uh, allows me to do more damage to weapons and engines. I am running low on supplies, but not low enough that it's an emergency I have to turn back or anything. But every time we survey, as you can see, um, our crew doesn't get used up unless there's some sort of surveying accident. So let's, I'll, I'll just show you. What's required here is 60 heavy machinery, 300 crew, and then it consumes supplies. The larger the world and the 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 larger the world uh, for planet size, the harder it is to, um, as you can see, the hazard rating and the planet size ups the survey cost for consumed supplies. So, but other things aren't consumed. So for instance, my heavy machinery and my crew isn't consumed unless there's some sort of surveying accident. It's possible to have those kind of accidents. Uh, doesn't happen often. All right, that's probably the last world I'm going to survey before turning back. Uh, but there is some... Oh, there's an old research station. These can be... These tend to have, um... Blueprints and cores and things like that. Oh, boy, does it ever. All right, so let's go through this. Uh, oops. So, Goss Cannons. Those are really good, large weapons. Uh, we'll stash them away. Squall. So the Squall here um, is an anti-shield, um, very large missile suppression system. Dual flat cannons, that's not quite as rare. Uh, burst PD laser, not quite as rare. Rail guns, which are eh, decent. Eh, maybe I'll set them aside. Well, no, I'm not going to set them aside. They're not that rare. Uh, there's a dagger high-tech... Um, uh, bomber group uh, where the bombers have just one giant torpedo. There is a low-tech Talon uh, where they have Vulcan cannons and swarm missiles. Then there's solar shielding. Um, so this in combat reduces the energy damage taken by 20%. And then um, it... Uh, Okay, um, let's just take all this stuff. I don't need to be staying here. So let's see. The solar shielding, originally developed, blah, 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 blah. Uh, decreases the effect operating in a solar corona has on combat readiness by 75%. So if you had a bunch of, sh if you had all your ships with solar shielding, you could fly into a star and make it very expensive for an enemy to pursue you. Um, but then it also reduces the enemy energy damage taken. The accelerated shields allows your shields to be raised uh, faster and it rotates towards the enemies faster, which is not helpful if you have 360 or near 360 degree uh, shield coverage. Uh, ECCM package, which uh, reduces the chance that missiles launched by the ship are hit by countermeasures or flares by 50%. Uh, we've got advanced optics, which is really really nice extends the range of beam weapons by 20 uh, 200 units 
Um, it reduces the ability for the beams to turn towards the enemy, but that's really nice if you have a big beam ship. Tachyon Lance Blueprint. So the Tachyon Lances are amazing, and now I can make them. And then Perdition Wing Blueprint as well. Uh, very, very cool. And this is exactly why we're out here. Oh, so, so I also scavenged a... Um, reducing my ship's sensor profile by 50% and increasing the durability engines and hull integrity as well. Um, and that is sort of a... makes you tank a little bit and makes you better at being a pirate. Ooh, and I unidentified contact trying to hide from me. So I'm doing an emergency burn. I cut up. I'm going to pursue... Oh, you know what? This is the fleet that the Luddock Church hired me to... Um, Kill. I'm just gonna fight them because, like, money is money and I don't really care who's paying me. But, like, yeah. So, when you're pursuing them, instead of you facing off, what ends up happening is every single one of their ships... I'm gonna go full assault here. But any, every single one of their ships gets deployed. You have stuff like nav buoys and comm relays that you can capture for bonuses. So, this gives 5% top speed. Um... This gives uh, faster command point uh, regeneration, which allows you to issue more commands on the tactical map. So each has their sort of own little benefits. Now, one of the issues here is um, I should have probably filled the kite, and I'm going to go do that, but it might be a little late now. Uh, I say that because uh, they have fast ships that are going to get away, and I have larger ships that are pursuing, and... Generally speaking, the size of your ship is the determining factor how fast you are. However, okay, so when this ship is facing me and using their flux, they move at 140, which allows me to catch up. But um, as soon as they drop their flux to zero, they get the flux speed benefit and they outrun me. Now, one way I could have basically ensured that uh, I had destroyed them is if I sent my second in command. When you have a second in command, you're not actually doing a real fight. It's like a rendered fight where the speed of the ships and stuff like that really aren't factored in. So it's not like, you know, it's it's it's, it's as if uh, all of the ships squared off and just shot at one another. Um, that's sort of what the uh, the second in command fights are. And I think, yeah, it's exiting. He's exiting the map. Shepard just retreated. And there's only one ship left. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have pursued this. It's not so worth it. Now, there are, are a bunch of other ways to speed your ships up. Uh, one of the interesting ways is to have the nav beacon uh, component on a larger fleet. I don't want to recover them. But uh, I did not actually complete the bounty. Oh, I'm running slow on supplies. All right, so let's... Um, again, this is a mission that benefits the Luddock Church, who are... They suck, and I don't really want to benefit them at all. So I'm going to jump back to space, and I'm going to chart a course just to the nearest star system to buy some more supplies so I can do some more surveying. And if I see any interesting intel missions come across uh, down here, I can go and queue them up as well. I don't want to warp in at the planet. I will warp in at some other gravity well. So... Uh, let's see. Personal bounty from Tritachion. Uh, that's pretty far away. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry so much about that. Because it's, uh... It's pretty, pretty distant. And this one's really distant, too. A lot of the higher bountied, uh, survey missions... Well, they're high bounties because you have to travel forever and further to get to them. I mean, not literally forever, but... 
You have to travel pretty far. Alright, so what I'm doing here is hiring a bunch of additional people. Oops. That's not what I meant to do. Um, and that way... I'll be able to survey uh, a lot more, like, larger things. Uh, and then, let's see. Mercenary officers. All right, so they have two mercenary officers here. There's Shannon Kayla, who is a steady person with some decent uh, abilities. And then there's this guy, who's cautious. I don't particularly, so cautious might be good for a uh, ship like the Talon that's large and, um, so I'm gonna hire one cautious guy. So he has combat endurance. Uh, so here we go. I'm gonna go into my fleet here. This ship is going to be captained by you, but you're gonna be changing your name to to Hector um, because cautious is a good uh, trait to have on a carrier because as a reminder these carriers have barely any weapons at all and the only weapon I really put on it is a very very long ranged long range uh, missile support weapon meaning that um, uh, Bora girl or Hector here will keep this ship nice and safe and out of harm's way which is actually very uh, very, very important. And then Talon, you will be tossed into Tragic Hysteria. And then we still have this Glit ship too. But I think the Glit ship is probably the worst combat ship I have um, amongst them all. Alright, so one last thing I was going to do before heading out to mission or survey or something like that is... Uh, no, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to wait to do that because it's going to take time. What I was going to do is to turn in my Gamma Core. No, oh, this uh, picket ship is trying to scan me. Turn in my Gamma Core for uh, money and rep, but it's not urgent. I can turn that in any time. So if you mouse over these, as you can see, I've surveyed here. Zero unsurveyed, zero unsurveyed, two unsurveyed, but I've already been there. Um, if the system is unexplored, you don't even know what planets are there. And then if it's explored but unsurveyed, it will tell you, like, just unsurveyed. So I want to head to new systems that potentially have the ability to for me to start colonies there. I'm not, I, d I definitely don't have the money to start up a colony right now. Um, but it also gives me an opportunity to potentially salvage some interesting um, technology and parts and and build up my uh, my money. All right, so there's, there's not going to really be anything here. I'm going to go in there so it's not unexplored. Oh, there's uh, some remnant um, remnant chips here. One of, the, one of the interesting things about the Neutron Star systems, though, uh, is it's blasting out material here from the Neutron Star. And this wave here will throw you from the star and deeply, deeply damage your ship. So you don't want to even hang out in this system for very long. Um, I spend no time at, at Gamma Star systems for that reason, because they are, they are hell on your ship. Totally hell. Alright, so, taking a look at this system here. This was an old pirate world that I had um, cleared out but I never really surveyed. When I originally came here, it wasn't to survey. And if you're wondering what I'm looking for, I'm looking mostly for ruins or, uh, additionally, I'm looking for uh, mining stations and stuff like that that are orbiting. Can definitely turn off my uh, transponder. I can also do radar sweeps like that periodically to see if there's um, things that are just beyond my visible range. But I am very quickly running out of resource, surveying resources. Oh, this fleet wants to fight. So this fleet is 
rather large fleet, but I'm going to engage it. I'm not going to try to disengage. So I'm going to deploy all of my combatants. And here's how I'm going to do the setup. I want the... Condor following the Dominator. My Shrike's following, or protecting the Condor. Uh, let me nix that command. Protecting the Condor. The Kite following the Dominator. And, um, and then little of me. And then the Dominator, actually, I want following me. So we have a bit of a train here. Now, despite being really good at doing, like, hit-and-run tactics... When I run, I need a place to run to. Which is why I have the Dominator following me. So you can see I have... Definitely the attention of some additional... I'm trying to lose the tail and draw some in. Yes, be reckless. Now these strikes have a sprint ability. Uh, so sometimes you can lure them in to sprint at you and then get them killed. Their venture... Oh, my kite's gonna die. But that's sort of to be expected. Sometimes I also like to spend a little time uh, busting up their small ships because their small ships make for really good um, cannon fodder and they can get in the way and absorb attacks that were meant for larger targets. So it, it definitely helps to uh, remove them from play. Clearing the field of, you know, like in chess, clearing the field of pawns so that you can focus on the important parts go and I'm not trying I'm trying not to overcommit to uh, any attack and therefore be caught out in the open unless I see an opportunity to strike all right I messed up that strike pretty good Ooh. cheeky little bugger he shot me with a big old dumb fire missile. So I think the vast majority of the ships that have been destroyed so far have been my doing. Because my fleet has mostly been just duking it out with uh, their big ships. And I've been tearing through their small ships. So what I'm doing is I'm moving over to their uh, big ships now. And I'm going to start punching big holes in their big ships. This Colossus, Colossus is Colossi or whatever you want to call them. Really have no right to be on the battlefield, in my opinion. They're so easy to kill. Even the pirate variants that... It's like, oh no, my Condor. I don't know. Yeah, there's not time to get it out. It's just disabled though. It's not pro It's not um, destroyed entirely. meaning we can recover it, although it might be damaged at the end of battle. I'm going to quickly vent before they're able to recover. So this is their big ship, and it's piloted by one of their captains. It's dead. And then I'll go over... Oh, leave me alone. My main guns are really not good anti-fighter weapons because they're so dang expensive to fire. Alright, so this strike is mine. His engines were off when I uh, ambushed and he's just about dead. Overloaded and gone. All right, so I've officially won, but there's still some ships left, so I'm just going to full assault, which means every ship for themselves, hunt and kill. If you massively outnumber and outgun uh, enemy fleet, you can just full assault. 
but it's not always the best choice. Big old dumb fire missile on to your side. Uh, I'm not going to bother chasing down that last wolf, so I'm going to claim victory. Uh, and let go the remainder. The ship recovery is the uh, Talon class ship. I'm going to recover that. And then pick through the rest of the wreckage. Uh, let's see. This is Annihilator rocket pods. That's kind of common. Chain, chain guns. Pylum launcher might be nice to keep. Uh, Reaper torpedoes. Okay, cool. Also pick through the wreckage. And I leveled up. Uh, that was a rather large fight, so I leveled up. Uh, damage to shields is something I wanted. And I'm going to start working on combat endurance as well. If I check the fleet here, uh, even though the Talon class ship blew up, um, Bora Hector Girl, uh, Girl survived. I'm going to give him combat endurance maxed and strike commander. Uh, strike commander is good. It uh, increases the maneuverability and missile speed of fighters. Um, carry command as well. And then max leveled up. Power grid manipulation. Advanced countermeasures. Gunnery implants. Okay. Uh, let's see. This ship here, it got a compromised hull. So hull integrity is reduced and supply to recover from deployment is reduced as well. Uh, that's unfortunate. But, you know, these things happen in combat and all. I feel pretty good about that fight. I mean, we took down so many more ships than... than um, you know, they had they destroyed one ship and we destroyed like all of theirs, just about. Man, these surveys are coming up dry. They're not a lot of ruins. Uh, often the missions that take you to survey things uh, will have ruins it or something fancy. Oh, so here's some vast ruins here. So let's explore the ruins. And we got some stuff out of this. So we got the sought after alpha core wow alpha cores are the super 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 legal um best possible ai core we also got a beta core and another gamma core uh, a ton of oh my god a ton of heavy machinery i'm gonna get rid of my metals in lieu of it uh the ability to make some of the ludic path blueprints um a cobra lpc fighter more Reapers, supplies, a Gauss Cannon that we're storing down here. So we have a nice buildup of Gauss Cannons. A little, a little light on a cannon. And then um, the rest of this stuff, let's see, I'll just take the organics. I don't have room for the rest of this. So what I can do is see these cargo pods, put these cargo pods into stable orbit. So now these cargo pods aren't going to drift off to nowhere. They're actually just going to stay in orbit of Leng Lenglata, or whatever it's called. And I can grab it later, but I did have to burn a lot of um, supplies in order to put it into stable orbit, and I don't have a lot of supplies left. So, what ends up happening when you run out of supplies is your combat readiness for all of your ships will start to dramatically decrease. Um, and when your combat readiness reduces to a certain amount, um, your ships can go critical and by that I mean they start breaking down as you use them So that's really bad. You don't You don't want to run out of supplies running out of fuel I think is worse especially when you're in deep space because you just sit there floating out of gas. It's bad It's very bad, but running out of supplies um, is not ideal either. So before I go um, Trading with them. I'm going to learn the Ludic path blueprint and then um, the AI cores that I have here, I'm going to set aside because I I don't want to accidentally just randomly sell them. And then the rest of the stuff I could sell. So 
trade goods. I'm going to sell all this in the black market. So because Talon class ship got exploded, I lost uh, some crew, unfortunately. Uh, I definitely don't need this many heavy machinery, so I'm going to sell a thousand of it. Actually, I'm going to sell all but 200. And then sell the rest of the weapons I got. And selling some of the uh, extra ship fleet stuff. So this adds about 90k to my balance, which is really good. Uh, one thing to be careful of is don't sell blueprints, uh, even when you learn that, learn them, because um, what can end up happening is if you sell the blueprints to the wrong people, uh, pirates can then use those blueprints to harass you and damage you and all that stuff. Uh, all right, so now we're headed over to the black market to look at ships we can buy. Or the open market. Ideally the black market, but the open market if we must. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have another condor. So the, the issue here is if your... Um, oh, no, no, that's not what I meant to do. If your uh, ship gets damaged, right? This condor has a compromised hull. The amount of money to restore and remove all the demods is really about the same cost as a brand new condor. Um, which means that... I'm probably more, I'm, it would be smarter to just shop for a new condor than to um, restore things, right? Unless you, unless it's a really rare ship and you're really not going to find a, a replacement. That would be the only scenario where I would say, yeah, stick with it. Uh, so let's see what other ships we can buy. Because condors are not rare. Uh, so they have an enforcer here, which might be nice, but we're using strikes and I'm, oh, I'm okay using strikes instead of enforcers, um, on the open market. They do have a light, uh, condor on the open market, but it's, um, it's more expensive. I'm probably only going to consider the, uh, closed market. Oh, mercenary officer. A cautious one. I don't need another cautious one. Oh, they're trying to scan me, as you can see. I can, in this time, I can let them scan me because I didn't really do anything on the black market. No contraband. So even though the AI cores are like super illegal, um, they don't scan as like contraband. If it was like drugs or organs or something like that, that's really what they're scanning for. Uh, like this stuff. Recreational drugs, harvested organs. That's really the illegal stuff, which is why you'll never see it on the open market. You only see it on the black market. All right, buying condor from the black market. Here we go. One condor and... Tarsus, Phaeton, Salvage Rig... Hmm. No, I don't think I'm going to go with Salvage Rig. Alright, so now uh, one thing I have to do is to outfit my new Condor, which uh, needs a name. So this one... will drop its weapons. And its captain. And this one is going to get a new captain and get refit. And make sure just to put the owned weapons in so I'm not really spending any money. Done. Uh, Typhoon, or the, the... Hmm. I'm gonna switch... Oh no, that wasn't something I owned. Never mind. Okay, so... Out with the old, in with the new. So here is the new one. Vulcan Cannons and Pylum. With the new captain. We're going to call this Talon. And this one. Sell me. Repair in the shop. Uh, let's go ahead and buy more supplies. Because I've been burning through them like crazy. 
and go to fleet, go to the black market, and sell, sell me. Now, it would have been, e I mean, obviously, talent sells for a lot more, so it's kind of obvious which one needs selling. But that's because uh, of the demod that uh, it was afflicted with. All right, so what else? We don't have a lot of money, so we should consider uh, either continuing our survey or... Oh, yeah, let's, let's survey this for the independence. It's really not that far away. Uh, so I did a little black market trade, pissed off the independence. Oh, you know what? Actually, even before I do that, let me get to a Tritachion world, and I'm going to turn in the AA cores. Uh, but, uh, looking at the time here, that's going to have to be for next episode. So, if you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me, anything like that, drop me a line. If you're a patron of mine and would like to be involved, get your name into the series, all you got to do is reach out to me. I'm looking for captains and ships. Uh, captains are limited to about 10. That's the most amount of captains I'm ever going to have. But ships, we could... Oh, well, I guess we also have administrators. But I digress. If you want something named after you, reach out to me. And I hope you all uh, enjoy this episode and tune in next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Adios.